liberals of Reddit who were conservative before, or conservatives who were liberal before. What made you change your state of mind, the state I physically live in? When I lived in California, my friends referred to me as that one conservative guy in the group. Now that I live in Tennessee, I'm referred frequently called hippie or commie. My political beliefs haven't changed. I didn't even have to change states. I just moved from Spokane to Seattle. Funny how geographically tied it can be. Born and raised in the Seattle Tacoma area, going over the mountains is always like entering a new world in Washington. Considering how three-fourths of that state is red, just shows how dense the coastal side is which makes us a blue state. I too am a conservative seat to light but liberal basically everywhere else. Similar here, my wife and I are definitely East Tennessee liberals but would be considered conservatives where my daughter lives in California without changing any of our positions. Sorts by controversial. Top comments. I was conservative, but then became liberal. Controversial comments. I was liberal, but then became conservative. Yeah, that's pretty much what I thought it would be. The first conservative to liberal post. Complete breakdown of economic reasons. The first liberal to conservative post. Literally. I was a liberal, and then I grew up. I think the controversy is due to the sheer arrogance and patronizing the liberal to conservative posts tend to be. I stopped reading from controversial just because all those posts seem to be just to piss people off and not actually engage in a conversation. Raised fiscally conservative socially liberal. McCain in 2008 was my first time voting. Started to enjoy doing research and looking at primary sources then realized that throughout my lifetime the Republican Party didn't really have any fiscally conservative policies just a far better PR campaign. The concept of small government eludes them if they are the ones in charge and they only cry for it if they're the minority party. This is much like me. I used to just go by what would hear. Assuming that the talking heads on TV were well informed and deliberating in good faith. However, the more I look into issues. And the deeper I go, the more liberal my views get. I'll still consider myself fiscally conservative, but with a deeper understanding of what services are better bang for the buck, or could even return money per dollar spent. Think investing in the IRS. As far as bang for the buck, look at things like sex education and free contraception and other family planning services. Money spent on those things returns dividends on money saved by handling low-income individuals. Like how children born to teenagers are far more likely to not be educated and to end up with a criminal record. As are the teenage parents themselves. What if we could a. Allow teenagers to not even be put into that position. Thus leading to more productive citizens. Investment returned. b. They choose to have those children. So now we focus on helping the teenage parent raise a well-adjusted and productive member of society. Investment returned along with not spending money incarcerating these individuals, or providing various forms of welfare. These two things alone would solve so many issues, like gun violence for example. But as a right-wing fiscal conservative, all I would be concerned about is but that's socialism. Look, we're going to be spending the money in any case. We can either spend money to punish people, or spend money to help them become productive and tax-paying members of society. I have no doubt we spend far more money dealing with criminals, and welfare, etc etc than we would if we would just help everyone out. Holy sh, this sounds just like me. I lean left socially but I'm very fiscally conservative. I supported the Republican Party because I thought they would do the most to preserve fiscal conservatism but learned that was not the case when I saw that most Republicans are starkly against closing tax loopholes. While I strongly disagree with the tax approach that Biden is taking, at least the Democrats are doing something to facilitate the redistribution of wealth through taxes. In order to have a functioning capitalist society this is absolutely imperative. There is currently far too much money tied up in the super rich and there is no way for our government to be paid duly for it because it all sits in equity and can have its tax easily circumvented. My earliest pivot point was probably their ardent opposition to comprehensive sex ed and free birth control. Numerous studies and experience from states implementing programs have shown they drastically reduce teen pregnancy rates. Teen pregnancy which statistically have higher incarceration unemployment uneducated rates which are a drain on the economy. Spending tax money on it has an excellent ROI but they don't want to do it. Draw your own conclusions as to why. I used to think the best approach was socially liberal. 
fiscally conservative but the more I observed, the more I find it's a shorthand of saying the system works for me, no need to change it for the betterment of others, as for the welfare of others, I'm just going to participate in token gestures and say I support their rights but not put my money where my mouth is. There are many social issues and injustices right now that need funding to address and correct. Often that burden falls on the government so the funding has to come from taxpayers. I grew up borderline conservative and just very sheltered in middle class, white areas. Working in high poverty conditions and spending lots of time with people of color changed my life. It is impossible to believe that poor people are poor because they don't work hard when you see parents working three jobs. It's hard to believe racism isn't a big deal when you see institutional racism at work daily. It's hard not to care about people who are not like you when they become real to you. And it's hard not to want to change the world. Then, to be more equitable, or at the very least, see people get their basic needs met. I started my political career far to the left, the just fix things phase, then swung to the medium right in college after learning more about fiscal policy, taxes, and business finance economics, the how it's supposed to work phase, now I'm leaning back towards the center left because the theories don't work, the fact that salaries have remained stagnant for decades while every facet of our lives, physical or digital, are monetized to normal life milestones are being priced out of reach of nearly every American is proof positive that the government and our form of free market capitalism is corrupt and doesn't work, let alone the comparison of our wages or healthcare to that of Congress. C-suite execs or retired generals sitting on defense contract boards. Now we have these massive funds buying up single family rentals and houses at 50% or more than their fair market value only to be rented out to what should be new families getting their first home. That's not a problem you can poo poo away. Just ask Japan how their shrinking population is faring. So in summary, despite some flip flopping my current take is somewhere in the center to left until these oligarchical problem is resolved and it does need to be resolved, or we'll be looking at a refine revolution or dissolution of the country. I wouldn't fight for this country right now either and I imagine a lot of guys would agree which also makes this a matter of national defense. Your views changed as you got more experience and more education. To this day I don't understand people who give others, including politicians, for changing their views. Am I supposed to have the same views I had when I was 21 now that I'm 31? Exactly. I can't remember where I read it, but when the boomers were the age the millennials are now, they had something like 20% of all wealth. Now millennials at the same point in their career account for 4%, and what's worse is that this figure is skewed by the fact that Mark Zuckerberg is a millennial and he holds 2% of all millennial wealth. Millennials literally have one tenth of the wealth their parents had, yet house prices have massively escalated as boomers turned housing from finding somewhere to live to a retirement plan they can leverage for extra money. Millennials are delaying having children because it's simply not affordable, not in a kids or expensive sense, but in a more basic I end every month owing more money than I started with sense. Leaving the US, I was surrounded by conservative ideas my whole life and really knew nothing else. Then I started traveling and eventually moved out of the country. It's amazing how things like healthcare and affordable education aren't even up for debate in most other countries. Now I'm known as a socialist by everyone I know back in the US. As a German I always find it funny when some Americans think Angela Merkel is socialist or liberal. Like no she's absolutely not. She is conservative and she grew up in a socialist dictatorship so I'm pretty sure she hates socialism. A lot of things that are considered left or socialist policies in the US are just common sense in the rest of the western world. I consider myself conservative in my beliefs and a right wing, leaning to the, the center but on the right side, yet a non-healthcare policy in the US is really stupid. I've heard that an ambulance ride costs around $1000 and that people don't go to the hospital because you guys have insane hospital bills. If that, insulin costs a lot as well. We have a poor healthcare system here, Brazil, with long waiting lines. I once waited for 7 hours, and sometimes there are not enough medics but at least we got something. If I break a finger, an arm, if I have a stroke, I'm guaranteed to have medical assistance and it won't cost me anything. We also have private healthcare but it isn't so expensive as in the US. I also lived in the UK for a an year and their public healthcare is superb. Since your country is rich you'd probably be able to afford a system like the British one. 
raised a Rush Limbaugh conservative, spent my teen years as a little ball of anger, read Ayn Rand in high school, got an econ degree in a very libertarian school, spent a few years with a smug the free market will fix everything if we just burn the system to the ground and let it regrow an hampered look on my face, and then I went to a grad program where I had to interact with people who weren't smug libertarians, tl. DR getting out into the world forced me to test my assumptions, and getting to know real people replaced my caricatures with empathy. I was conservative in high school but once I was more aware of the economic effects of certain policies I became much more liberal. It's fiscally irresponsible not to invest into policies like lead removal, family planning, universal health care, and a social safety net because the returns on a population that can produce more. Also now that I pay taxes I don't want people dying on the streets, I paid good money for those streets. Also now that I pay taxes I don't want people dying on the streets, I paid good money for those streets, I laughed way harder than I should have. It's fiscally irresponsible not to invest into policies like lead removal, family planning, universal health care, and a social safety net because the returns on a population that can produce more. That's what I don't get. The returns that you get in the long term when you take good care of your people and invest in them are so significant, that you would think it would be a no-brainer. And yet here we are. People that are well taken care of and secure are far less likely to cause problems such as crime and and what not. Trying really hard to not use the word selfish. But conservatives are big on personal responsibility. They want to spend their own money to buy the services they need on the private market, and for the government to stay out of how they live, but still have strict laws against what they consider to violate traditional values. They believe the world would be better if everyone just did this instead of depending on the government to help them. Those too poor or sick to fend for themselves should be helped by voluntary charity, not tax-funded government programs. I find this somewhat narrow-minded, but understanding it can help make sense of where a lot of their policy ideals come from. The realization that kid me was just parroting my conservative parents and taking their word at face value without thinking about it, this, and as the years went on I kept noticing I did not align with the GOP, couldn't fathom being part of a party that didn't believe everyone deserved affordable healthcare, couldn't fathom telling someone else how to live their lives abortion and same-sex marriage, and then Trump happened. That was the final straw that opened my eyes, and then moving away and coming to visit family as the liberal snowflake black sheep when in reality I'm just more educated on how to have policy discussions and my family is more about argument for the sake of argument. The idea that the whole country can be run by only two different sets of ideas is ridiculous. Why even have red or blue? Why not a whole rainbow of different ideals? Why do we have to separate ourselves into oppositions, f bipartisanship? I grew up in deep red south with conservative Christian parents, my entire worldview was warped by that. Then at 15 they let me use the internet unhindered and every effing thing I said got me completely obliterated, like consistently. I got a wow sub and kicked from my first guild for being a bigoted dickbag since I called gays aid spawning monkeys and my second guild for saying my parents checked the basketball courts near our house before we moved in to make sure there weren't any black kids. Was the entire internet filled with liberty hippie idiots? My 16-18 year old self thought. Then I fell for furry girls. Ran into some furry porn and was like oh sh this cat chick is hot. Made an account and again. People weren't too appreciative of my a backwards ways. I got banged and shone constantly. That's when I realized, maybe everyone around me personally was the problem. Especially as gay stuff became more normalized and religion became less important. The final clincher was my first Twitter account. I joined a conservative group and the absolutely insane theories and stuff they were coming up with seemed way stupid compared to the stuff the furry artists I followed were saying. So I swapped to the other side and really studied it. Liberal policies just made sense. I have a friend over in Norway and another in Finland and socialism isn't scary. If anything I found myself envious of their positions on stuff like healthcare and minimum wage. This is also around the time I became agnostic. If everything else I learned as a kid was bullsh bigot speech. Who's this god thing I've never felt in my entire life that a large chunk of the world doesn't believe in and science has basically moved long past? At this point something just snapped. Why do I hate trans people? Why do I think people with pronouns in their profiles are idiots? Why do I think gay marriage shouldn't happen? 
why was I ever okay with racism, none of this affects me in any way at all, I shouldn't care, and I really should be supportive of it because it doesn't affect anyone in any bad way if someone wants to be a girl. I needed a reset though, so I just deleted everything online, deleted my entire history and remade myself as a brand new person essentially. I joined liberal groups and forced myself to understand their positions and over time I agreed almost 100% with everything. The only thing I'm still on the fence on is trans guys playing female sports. That one still seems a little far fetched based on our tech right now. Other than that, I'm on the Bernie train. This was wild to read. I met other people outside my white social upper middle class suburb. I transferred from a college in Shreveport with 1000 students. Mostly white, some black, zero Asian, most decently well off families, to one with over 30,000 students of all colors and incomes. Diversity of environment does a lot to create diversity of opinion. There's a reason that college graduates mid Gen X and youngers were heavily liberal in the US. I was really conservative in middle high school just because I'm from a small town in the south and that's all I knew. Then I dug deep into my own personal beliefs, went to college traveled, and realized a conservative agenda doesn't benefit me or my family, not to mention I'm not even straight. Ah, yes, the two political opinions, liberal and conservative. In short, I grew up, I was a hardcore libertarian in high school and shortly after, it seemed the most fair, but as I aged and had more experience with people I figured out that it wouldn't work, people are too greedy to be trusted to help out with things that are too big for individuals like road networks and emergency services, they require everyone to pitch in, and everyone benefits, I've grown more liberal with time as more and more things get added onto the pile of stuff that society really benefits from, but people don't want to fund on their own, like healthcare and social safety nets, sort by controversial for best results, sorting by best, I was conservative, but now I'm liberal, sorting by controversial, I was liberal, but now I'm conservative. Went from liberal, to conservative, and now finally to moderate, even though being moderate is frowned upon these days. Both sides have their good and bad and it's foolish to think that only one side is the good side. I started traveling, realized that anyone who labels themselves as Republican or Democrat is just contributing to the hive mind. Real ones accept cultural differences and vote based on policy rather than party and sentiment. I like Bush, I loved Obama, then 2016 hit and I don't like anyone. What exactly did you like about Bush? I grew up and formed my own opinions. Before that I was a conservative because my parents were.